meeting of the Capital Planning Committee. Um, for our time anyway. Uh, we have a quorum this morning. We have everyone here. Thank you all for coming. And I don't have the minutes to pass out from the last meeting. I'll get that for the next time. So that's a deferred piece on our agenda. Um, so let's get right down to the Nanter Field building. Um, Mark, you want to? Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. I've always said, don't stand near the camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mark Sam, with your recreation committee. I just put your last name, Mark. S A N D T. S A N D T. Yes. D T. Thanks. Thank and David Broll, B R O L L, recreation committee. Okay. Well, came back because there were some questions that um, were presented to us. We went back to the committee and to people in the community as to the concession area. Mm -hmm. And after talking particularly with our, some of our users, that the idea of minimizing that area for the time being uh, and to keep the project under and or under budget is essential. Um, and, and looking at the plans, um, <clears throat> a lot of the stuff can be done later if they if they need warrants. Yeah, our thoughts were to try to, in the, in the sort of pre-planning, to plumb everything and run electricity underneath when they do that so that in the future everything's done and so all that has to be done is brought it through the floor if we had to run sinks and stuff like that. So when it gets to that point of having electricians and plumbers in there, that everything is pre-plumbed. Mm -hmm. So it isn't another project. It's just as simple as cutting through and adding. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much just running your your soil line. The water lines are in already yep. and power is in already. Right? Yep. So all from the bottom. Yep. Okay. So, um, and having had conversation with you, this, uh, you've gone back to your architect, your architect has not changed the dollar figure because of some other escalations since that dollar figure has been out for a, a number of years. I actually contacted Ken Savoy, spoke to him at length about the project, and if we were to do this, you know, if we were to remove the concession area, would there be a significant difference? He said, it's been, you know, five or six years since they originally did it. He said, I wouldn't go any lower than 200,000 for your bid. If it comes in less great, he said, but I wouldn't expect it to, so. Okay. Any questions from the board? I mean, that's what we tasked you with last time you were here. Thank you very much for, for being Well, I guess the question I have is that, listen to what you just said, is that you're not giving up on the concept downstream of having this concession stand, con concession program in there, is that correct? Um, I, th I think our thought was to to be prepared instead of, let's say it was something that was needed in the future, um, that it's there to be done. Like, I think that if you did, the minimal cost of running those pipes and having them there, and then we find that there's a need for that, um, is that is that sort of what? Yeah, we're we're, we're let's back up a bit. looking at concessions, the verb versus the noun, and that's where I got confused. And it sounds very simple. Many of our uh, users are looking just to sell a product, candy, soap, water, whatnot to give, and not necessarily food preparation. And when you look at the design here, there's a three space, but it's an extra sink for the moms. So it's a lot of food preparation. What we are doing 
at the same time is the concessions at the high school field has a complete setup. There's a question of whether or not that's even worth that they're going to be using. So mm -hmm. let them do the test run. <laughs> Figure out what, what works, so what cool. doesn't work. <laughs> and if they're not utilizing, and our users are saying, we, we're not really caring much for it, then why do it? So using them as a test model and taking advantage of, of, of uh, an existing program without spending uh, substantial money to uh, install something that may or may not get fully utilized. Mm -hmm. but that was kind of the genesis of our concept last time, is that you know, you know, the, the events that you run there, the major events where you run the, the tournaments, that makes sense, but those are few and far between on a, on a historical day and year basis. I don't know how many major events, but it's going to be like five, maybe or less. Right. And at that point in time, to ramp up for those events, in my opinion, and just utilize it five times is somewhat of an overkill. Plus, I believe that, I, I don't know what your stance is, but the logistics concern me relative to who's in there, who's got the permits, what do you have to do? Because we're, we are the purveyors of those of those products, town and breweries, because you're on our premises, you're using our facilities, and you're selling our products. And you know, not to say that it's a big issue, but reliability and or you know a responsibility is of a concern. And I don't know how you go about it quite candidly. Do you notify the town administration that X Y Z organization is going to be selling product, and who's responsible for it? Do they have the proper not to say that's a big, big deal. I, we always skate on those things historically anyway. But, but you know, and then the other thing that kind of concerns me is storage of, of product there. You know, people say, oh, we need a refrigerator for soda. Well, the question is, you know, whose refrigerator is it? Whose soda is it? <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to get somebody say, well, they opened up and, you know, they sold product that wasn't theirs, that was belonged to the XYZ organization. Because you've got to have multiple independent yes, groups yes. in there. It's not one company. It is, I don't know how many, People who will be using the facility, but they are independent, and you don't want to have any, you know, any confusion. I guess that's my concern. So that's it. so. I it, I applaud you for coming back, you know, with a revised situation. I know that it's hard to give it up. I think when I, I personally watched the committee on, on video, thanks for the video because you can watch it at home. I got the sense that you know the committee was torn to give it up a concession concept because they think that is basically a revenue generating opportunity that is going to go by the wayside. I just don't know how much revenue generation, if anybody looked at, as you said, maybe it's wise to look at other organizations' concept of revenue generation. I don't think there's that much there to it. And that was, that was but it's always ideal to say, well, I have a concession stand, a fryer, and a grill, and the this, and the that. And you know, it doesn't get used properly and adequately, then it goes into, say, the state of disrepair, and it's, you know, well, you know, got to replace X, Y, and Z product because it's not functioning. Well, what, what I think I just heard, though, is you're, you're not giving up on concessions. You're just giving up on preparing food. Is that right? So right. so yeah. you don't yeah. sell candy bars <coughs> and whatever, um, things that you just bring in and open up a box and sell it. Again, going back to verb versus noun. Yes. Um, the one is just selling product that is prepared, uh, pre-made, pre Bottled, which is hand exchanging. The yep. other is the preparation of the food uh, that would maintain health uh, regulations. You know, they're, they're not proposing to do that, but you are proposing to do it first. Yes, we would like, we'd like our uh, vendors, our users, to find other ways to generate money for themselves sure. um, with little or mm -hmm. no impact on us. Larry, to your statement that it's a small concern about these issues, it's a small concern when it goes well. It's a big concern when it doesn't. Yes. And, that, and it's not just for the rec committee, it becomes a concern for the whole town. And there's no need to become a lightning rod uh, if we can avoid that. Yeah, one of the criteria that you know when in capital planning is, is it a revenue generator? And regardless of how you flip it, I don't think it is because it's not a revenue generator significance. It may be a revenue generator to the organizations not to the town. So we will have to look at it. Does it generate revenue to the town? It does. The, 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 the other thought about that is if they have an opportunity to, what we find is these groups who are to rent it for whatever period for the weekend or mm -hmm. the more of it. 
but if they have the access, not the like prepare food, but to, to sell their mm -hmm. product, mm -hmm. it also it it it's sort of it's a it's a carrot for them to come in and use the facility because they can do that and they can well they quite well yeah. taken. I and I think that's why <laughs> in the last meeting we said that the alternative was the concession truck phenomenon. Yeah. As as an alternative, that's kind of a you know a, you know kind of a buttoned up concept comes in, does the thing that they're properly prepared, they're properly licensed. Yeah. And then they exit when the event is over and there's no residual. So that segues to the question that I had, what, which is, have you had entities who have expressed interest in running time but have turned it down because of a lack of either, say, facility in the event of lightning, uh, ability, you know, a place, a place under a roof to gather, do you have examples of uh, revenue you've missed out on because you've had inadequate facilities? Is, is that a thing? Is that a thing? Well, there's two parts to that question. The first part is we are aware because we're relatively new. We haven't had people approach us to say we want to use the place, but we're not going to. They just want to approach us. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the, the big events that we're looking at, again, as I put in my proposal, we have two sets of users, for lack of better terms. The first set is the regular uh, sporting events after school, Monday through goes all week for practices, and they are usually an hour, hour and a half long. Particularly if the young kids' parents are there, and if there is an event of lightning and thunder, the parents are there to remove them. Looking at the larger activities that are scheduled, Byfield, uh, excuse me, the uh, yeah, Byfield Arts uh, meeting when I talked to Heidi about that, she said these things are booked in advance. And we will put the show on as long as we can, and once the lightning hits, we pack up and we get out of Dodge. So for them to utilize it, no. The thinking is, and it's put in a proposal, ideally like in three to five years, we'll be having summer programming, which will be lasting a lot longer. Uh, I, I want to use the word workshops, because if we do use to start calling it a camp, there are different regulations within the <coughs> Department of Public Health and whatnot. They require nursing and other uh, people want to do it, that's fine. But I'm just saying to, to simplify mm -hmm. that the town of New Harris run programming. Um, they would want to have a place that they could hold children for a period of time and maintain their programming throughout the day. Because parents during the summer don't want to be picking kids up three days in a row at at 9.30 in the morning because programming couldn't happen because it was right. So we're looking down the road the need for uh, shelter. Uh, currently, kids will hang out on, under the deck. We do want to provide through the spring and uh, fall periods less likely chances of uh, the thunder showers, a place to gather until parents can get there. So I'm starting to think down the road. Our usage during the summer, right now we have one, we had two in the past, um, activities, uh, Circus Murphy's being one, and then uh, Heidi's program is the other. What we're trying to do is get more programming during that, what I'm calling our shoulder season. And we do have um, conversations right now with Buddha, Boston uh, Area Disc Association. They would like to bring a tournament for alt uh, Ultimate Disc for New England into the area as a two-day or two-weekend proposal bringing teams in. They like the idea of being able to shelter kids because kids are coming from afar to, to participate. But the goal is uh, summer programming, week-long stretches to help uh, many of the parents in the area with summer summer activities for the children. Does that answer your question? Well, a little it does. Long it does. No, 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 yeah. it does. It does. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, and I, I know of another uh, organization that, that I'm associated with that, that is always looking for places where they can have some program. And I thought this, we already had that for Gold Age. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But I, I've been in conversations, you bring that up, and that would be a perfect place. I talked to uh, people with, uh, regarding Tai Chi or yoga. We could do it there on, during the summer, early morning yoga or afternoon, but it rains, so they can stay there. 
And the idea yeah. is yeah. they don't have to cancel a program if we have enough space to keep them there and bring them to different parts of town. I read with some interest an article in the Daily News which talked about the the whole Manterfield scenario and the res resolution of the uh, problem we have with the illegal dumping and so on. Uh, and in the article, they indicated that you know quite correctly the town of Newry is taking over the billing aspect of the activities, the collection of the funds. But they inserted one concept that this collection money will be used to offset the building committee, the building of the uh, of the of the and which was in the paper. So it leads me to the question: Is how how are we doing fiscally in the collection of monies for the use of the field, and uh, and what does that budget look like? And I know the town now does the mowing of the fields at no cost, I think, to yep. the to the committee and so on. And so I just didn't know how much money is in that in that revolving fund, revolving fund, and uh, whether or not any of that money could be earmarked to cover some of the cost of the building. Not the total, I understand it's a big number, but I think offset some of the costs that would be projected. In other words, over time, I mean, it doesn't mean it's going to have to be, take all your money from the account and plow it into the building, but say, well, you know. so we did, I, I had asked the town accountant to run me some uh, reports to, to look at the balances yesterday. I don't have them yet, but I'll forward them to the committee members, and uh, there are committee members as well as soon as they're done. But when we had initially met with the former committee to um, to pursue having the town do the maintenance, the field mm -hmm. maintenance, um, and the mowing, our initial projections showed we might um, bring maybe a, between seven or eight thousand dollars extra a year mm -hmm. available for whatever the rec committee wanted to use that for um, to suggest that it would. You know, we're only one year into this, be enough to fund the mm -hmm. building project. Oh, um, I don't think it's enough to fund it total. I think the, the question, for example, good partnership on both sides, say, oh, sure. a, a sum of monies, for example, could be used to offset that. And, and also, you know, and I understand that the, the other question is the rec committee is responsible for other fields and other, other locales. And I know that one of the major criticisms is in our entire town focus has been on one field. And we do not know or have a plan for the health and well-being of all other rec activities, wherever they may be. Yeah. And, I, and that's the other aspect of it. But you're going to and I just don't know. I mean, I know that we were talking in the revolving fund at one time about a, a collection of total amounts of money in the fifty thousand per yeah. annum. That's right. Yeah. And you know, and for that fifty thousand, it was plowed back in almost exclusively into the field itself, and irrigation and mowing and fertilizing and whatever they do. And they do a great job. The question now is, if we're only saving 7,000, how much more activity level are you going to be generating? How much more revenue will be collected? And whether or not 20,000, 25,000, because they won't pay. If the building's 200K, town comes up with X, rent committee comes up with Y. I don't know if that's a fair uh, discussion to have. Money's always a fair discussion. <laughs> um, in the proposal, we wanted to focus on main, finding maintenance for the building. I think a lot of times people come up with great ideas, mm -hmm. and they don't think about how do you maintain yes. mm -hmm. maintain it through the years. And the budget we created is separate from our, maintenance, our, our field maintenance budget for that area. So that the money that we generate through uh, the new revenues that we create because of this building, would be used to maintain the building. We, had, we put out a uh, over a 20-year plan on how, in time, we'll be able to replace the windows, replace the, the shingles with the money that we generate. So to your question, we, we are putting the money back in the into this building, and that's the goal behind the, the budget. In terms of the field maintenance, our current users, those funds would be used primarily to take care of that. Now, if we get extra and we can and we need additional funds, sure. It's the same pot of money, but from a budgeting perspective, trying to allocate the money generated with new, um, new use to make sure that that building is maintained uh, in its pristine well, condition. Well, I think that's very well taken. I think one of the concerns we have was indeed the maintenance, especially with the, with the toilet facilities and the need for, I'm not an expert of, of maintenance of those facilities, but they tend to be ongoing 
and, and significant, and whether or not you can say we're not going to be coming back to the town for a line item for a maintenance of the, the, the Manterfield Clubhouse for X, Y, and Z dollars per end, whether it's five or ten, and we're, we're going to be absorbing it within, that would be, a, that would be a, uh, I think, an arguing point for it. I think we're aggressive in our budget to ensure pumping, for example, of mm -hmm. every year. And some people say, oh, that's, that's too much. Better we'll find out the money now. First year. Yeah. <laughs> better find the better the budget for it yep. and make sure it's done and, and done regularly than hope that it's a good enough job. Yeah. So it, is the building uh, going to be heated in the winter or? It has yeah, to stay. Yeah, it has to be heated too. But it only has to be heated to about 50 degrees or 40 yeah. 40 is enough. Yeah, I think there's a certain point where you start to. You have to you have to make sure that you get at least 32 plus out of the walls so that you don't freeze any pipes but you know thermostat said at 40 42 degrees will do that quite frankly I'd, I'd love to see the building used during the winter we have some things in the works that would make that again using our shoulder season summer and winter to utilize it for the community instead of sitting idly and it was opened up for uh, a skating rink <coughs> Fantastic. People can go in there. People can be using the fields throughout the year as opposed to a spring or a farm. Yeah. And it's not just the fields, it's the whole entire area. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was <coughs> that was sort of our, our thought about making it not just was it six fields? But four and then two small ones. You can yeah. call it six, yeah. Call it yeah. Five, yeah. Eight, five, eight, eight, whatever. <laughs> but the, you know, you see people out there cross country skiing now and uh, to have that utilized is like what it's supposed to be used for, a recreation area. We, we seem to be coming to the capstone I, discussion on, on the building. What, I mean, what anticipated future needs do you think you'll have for that facility? When you say future needs, stuff that's large scale? Any scale. Any scale. Needs is an operative word. Um, one of our jobs, I think, is to look in the community and what they see that area to be used for, and that's what we want to facilitate. <coughs> uh, in terms of other additional activities that we're putting in, that we're looking at investigating, is as it was originally planned, a uh, canoe launch I mean, with uh, fish and wildlife, looking at feasibility, study, I mean, anything can be done. But with our own uh, revenue that comes not from the town, to put, it, put a canoe launch in, that being able to bring you straight down the uh, Parker River. We're looking at, again, the budget we have, we would do, we would do outside fundraising activities to uh, support it, support any uh, future endeavors. It's bad, uh, looking at basketball courts. Originally approved in 2011, I believe, and that was not fully utilized for whatever reason. But we'd love to see basketball courts up there so that it could be utilized. Uh, I was approached by people regarding a, a small amphitheater in the back corner. I don't know if people are aware of that you take the bend behind where the, where the subject now is. There's a bend that goes, there's a small cutout. You know, and then seeing if there is a, a need to drive uh, a study to see if that could be utilized for plays or music performances. So looking at what the community's sees this property potential for, helping develop a needs assessment for it, and then or a fleet feasibility study, and seeing if it's something that we can put in. It's specifically, if things are considered as hot topping the parking lot. You know, you have, a, you have a major parking lot there that's being used. Have you discussed internally at Rec Committee that we have a need to hot top that? At this point, we haven't. One of the biggest concerns that was brought to uh, my attention in years past was the runoff issue mm -hmm. because such a large circuit and if you're talking just the front part as opposed to the whole linear drive front part the guesstimate right now with Sam was a 200, 200 piece 200 car parking lot a lot of runoff um, and we're near a sensitive uh, environmental area so I don't, I don't know if that'd be a, a priority Anything else? I know there's another group that, that uh, 
utilizes Triton once a year, which is the North Shore cyclists. They, they do their century ride out of Triton, but they don't have any facilities there. Um, and so moving up the street doesn't change the mileage. <laughs> they use them facilities for that, and they run, they run out of Georgetown. They run out of the school over at Georgetown. Again, with no facilities, if they had some place to run with facilities, that would be really nice, and they run every weekend. So there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there that could utilize this if they knew about it. Hmm. Well, we were doing some outreach, um, getting feelers, as uh, Marshall said. For many years, people have not even considered it because it hadn't been available. Mm -hmm. with, with this moving forward, we're doing some more outreach and getting a sense of what can be done with it. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Not for me. <coughs> okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank and I had my first it's shot. Been, I did it really well. It's been the best time to look at. Yeah. 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 Y
anything on the little gym floor? No, I did have an opportunity to speak with um, the superintendent, and I asked him how we would, you know, how would, is this on your radar as far as your capital plan? <coughs> Um, and he said no, that they were engaged right now in putting together a capital plan and suggested that we wait until next season unless right, there was sure. some urgency. Um, what we normally do is our facilities manager and their facilities manager get together on an annual basis to discuss the issues that they're going to be facing mm -hmm. outside of the building envelope study that we had, had right. um, conducted. Um, and that wasn't identified. So um, when Brian and I spoke, it, it wasn't that, oh no, we don't want to do it. It was just, how do we want to plan for this? He said, let's wait until we finish our capital plan and then do it. Um, so the committee's knowledge, the town of Newbury has, has participated with the other two towns on a subcommittee to decide on uh, lease ownership of the, of the buildings, right. what the plan should be for all three towns. And lease, uh, comma, ownership? Yes, in other words, right now, there's a kind of diverse, uh, Policy, Triton owns Salisbury School, Newbury owns the Brown School, I mean, Brawley's building a new school. Um, it, it became a kind of a new point of your understanding that it became obvious that when Salisbury built their elementary school, their bond rating wasn't sufficient enough. Triton had a better bond rating, so the steps were played to get lower interest rates on that particular project. And the maintenance of that building became Triton's responsibility, which means the town of Newbury is responsible for maintaining that building. And of course, being a brand new building, there was no anticipated early cost associated with them. It was fine. Now, if they're facing some major costs like a new roof, it, it changes the, the dynamics. So we have said, let's, let's decide to get a universal plan of ownership across the board. And so there's consistency from one town to the other to the other so that there is the same financial exposure across the board. We haven't had a meeting yet, so. And even if we decide, if the town decided that they didn't want to uh, give up ownership of their building, we want to make sure in the lease agreements we address um, mm -hmm. those inequities. Yeah. Well, my plan is we should petition to take over the rental school itself and get rid of the trading agreement and go right back to the old one. I, I, think, I think that would be a shock to the community, but I think. What the heck? I would say so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, so are, are, we, are we staring down the barrel of making concessions on one end to ultimately have to take over the inside of the round school. No, no I think we're... No, 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 I'm, I'm talking about, are we, are, is that, if I'm, the pieces that you both have given, I'm reading that potentially we're looking at giving them one end to take over the inside of the round school, but at the same time to avoid having to kick in for the building of a new round school. Is that what we're looking at right now? In the I simplest think, one? To some degree, we, we want to identify through the lease agreement what responsibility the town of Newbury has versus the Triton Regional School District for those things inside the building. Um, and then we also want to define um, whether or not we want to give up our ownership, maintain our ownership, but, but in this document also state, state very specifically all costs relative to the Salisbury Elementary School would be borne 100% by the Salisbury. town of Salisbury. Um, it first. just, I, I think it was done and nobody it was half really baked. What it really became that. that was a half baked and it was kind of a, uh, a back of the envelope type of deal that we could get, try to get better financing for the road. Salisbury School has to do that. And it was a good decision to be done saving financing and saving costs. Now it's mature to the point where we're seeing our responsibility for the Brown School not equivalent, not equal to the responsibility other towns have for their facilities. And I think you're absolutely right that the issue on the table is the creation of potentially of a new Pine Grove School and what the business relationship would be between that school and the Triton School District for proper operation. And therefore, if we're two to one, if we're, they're giving theirs up, and maybe there's some way of just making it universal across the board. Okay. So that's one. Uh, number two, uh, in, in other business, uh, we've all received this tone. Massive thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, Even the executive I, summary was uh, 
Yeah, I, <laughs> wasn't that I have to sobering. Show, yeah, I have to tell you, I haven't made it through all of it. <laughs> I've read it. I think it's the most comprehensive document that I've seen generated in the town in a long time. And you fellows did a great job documenting the business reality of what the equipment status is. I disagree with the conclusion significantly. So do I. But I think that, you know, the, the basis of it is it's a good starting point. The question I have is more the appropriate role of how to play it. In other words, you know, uh, the, the issue is there are so many questions and you jump to the conclusions without getting the justification as to why you have to go this way. I understand that the committee members that are the consultants have their point of view and we've all dealt with them in the past and they're constrained aggressively by standing with standards that they can be not called on the carpet for. But we, uh, for your edification, we did some research and I shared with Marshall on the issue of tires. And they maintain that all tires over seven years old have to be replaced. Well, they're on their on their website. There was another article that said that's not true. There's no scientific evidence for it. And it was that the committee, finance committee, would said, but I think it's a, a good first step to standardize where we're at and we want to head with it. But the issue is, for example, calls into question the dogmatic, in my opinion, step, uh, conclusions. They you must do this because this. <coughs> yeah, and I think, yeah. and I think that the concern I have is jumping ahead with, let's go out and spec out two new pieces of equipment, let's look at this, is like putting the fox in the hen house, because anytime you ask an organization, in my opinion, like a, i.e. a fire department, let's go buy a new fire truck, they're gonna want it. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta have that. Yeah, exactly, and I think that, you know, and I think that it's okay, I mean, I know that, but some, you know, there's some concessions and negotiations that could take place, you know. You know, I think that one thing that I raised at FinCom that we haven't done, is we haven't properly funded a, 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 a place a placeholder to put money in to anticipate these things. So there is one in the 2018 budget. Very good. Yep. So the idea of saying, okay, we're going to... Some sort of a sinking fund? That, yeah, uh, it's a, a, a capital outlay yes. account. What we currently yes. fund with the lease payment is about 50000 for one of the trucks that we had purchased a couple yes. of years ago. Um, to acknowledge basically what we're reading in the report, whether we replace them immediately or over time or how we do it, we're gonna need some, some uh, yeah, uh, yeah, But I don't like the, I mean, the idea of, of jumping jumping into this with some financing, at, you know, put some money aside rather than right. allocating all in one fiscal year. Right. Because kind of, we've read right. it. Right. Really plan plan but the underlying reality of the whole thing is that the, the entirety of the document is a suggestion. Absolutely. It is a yeah. suggestion. Yeah. There's nothing made it. I, you know, from a risk mitigation standpoint, if it were me, I hate having that thing on record. I don't like having it. I wish it could have been a privately funded uh, yeah, document it. held in private hands because in the event that something happens, we've got some documentation here that says you should have fixed this and that. I hate well, having that. I However, agree. but I understand that, look, it's done, that cat's out of the bag, and, and, but ultimately everybody needs to look at it. Like it is a suggestion. And, and who better to decide how to prioritize those things than the people that have to use that equipment? Well, I think so. I think that I, I watched the, the, the video of the presentation, and you have to go back and get a genesis of watching that mm -hmm. and get a sense of the tactics used by the consultants to oppose dogmatic oh, decision making sure. on the town, and the town sitting back and rightfully so, not questioning it because they didn't have any knowledge of it. Right. But they were, you know, but you dig into it a little deeper and you say, well, you know, one of the criticisms that I focus on was one of the trucks they want to sunset is that they have gross vehicle weight on the front axle is overloaded when they run the truck with four men in it. Right. My question is, how many times do we go out with four men in that truck? Right. I don't know. How many times do we have four? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, but you know, you know, and the idea is, is that that becomes the end decision. That's, that's a violation, therefore you can't use it. They did another one that we were considering, was they come across the folks in Byfield who put together a very nice fire truck for fighting forest fire. But because it was homemade by the by the town and the members, and they took some pride in it, but there's no corresponding uh, product for them to yeah. assess, so they 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 can because we have no way of looking. I admit, to, I, I admit to my cynical nature, but if I were a fire apparatus salesperson, I would keep that organization fit well. Right. Yeah, there is that is the ultimate lead source. Oh. Right. And and well, they they dispute that, but I mean, you know, they yeah. went ahead. They went ahead and maintained, you know, the, you know, the, the this the 
situation of, of medical, I mean legal, you know, responsibility, which I agree with you. And the question is, no one's really done a good job of whether or not how much the town's on the hook for us from a lawsuit perspective, it's and whether or not you know, you that's know, all part of yeah. what we're doing now. Right, but I mean, it, you know, but you can't, you know, that's but from a capital point of view, you know, capital position, you know, you look at the conclusions, some of them, but I, but on that did a tremendous job of assessing. You know, mm -hmm. status of you know equipment that's on. They take the equipment off if it's a, if they have a weight problem. Get you get more out of it. You know, just not to say it's going to exist forever. Right. And the other thing was that we talked about with the uh, highway department was this issue of, of making sure they power wash or, or steam clean the vehicles, and they have that capability. And if they do that, which they've never done because they were separate operating right. entities, there may be some benefit to all equipment that we have, regardless of. Sure. Whether that be a fire truck, police cruiser, or an ambulance, get you know, get some type of preventive treatment to keep the rust in, in our part of the world in under control. Well, that's, yeah. that was a corrosion. I thought corrosion references were probably fifty percent of that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. always like it's, 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 the, re it's the reality we're in. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. but if you if you look at some of those <clears throat> and and um, and some of the pictures, and while they are there are some there are corrosion issues. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are not structural. Yeah. Well, and a lot of them, I mean, you got a big piece of metal there and there's some corrosion on yeah. it, but I, how much does that affect the strength? That, um, Again, I thought they did a good job. Well, my, my, my take was, I'm going to talk to people who run large trucks. Yeah. And, As you should. And you and, know, that's your business. Go right ahead and talk. And, and, uh, and see where this pans out, because we have two really separate Issues. We have some people who run large trucks all the time. Um, I deal with them. There's a, a firm up in out of Portsmouth, and there's also uh, another firm down here in Danvers. And they do have corrosion issues, and they do have maintenance issues on the trucks. But usually, it's the little stuff. It's not the frames. You know, it's oh well, this piece broke because it rusted through. What's it do? It holds a hinge. Yeah. We weld it up. Yeah. Well, my concern, and Tracy helped me out here, is what's the, what's the proper role we should play? I got thinking about this. My thought was is that we as capital planning react to a request presented to us. And I anticipated the issue that we would get presented to us the need for fire truck A, fire truck B. And I wondered, do we jump the gun to get, to get ahead of it, as, or do we basically wait Turn. No, I just, I wanted you to have that because at some point in time, whether it's next year during our capital planning process, you will be presented um, those requests, I would say, for certain. But th the thing mm -hmm. that's important to note is everything has to go through process. So that is just for your information. Mm -hmm. I just want you to have it and know what's coming down no, the pipe. That. But it, it's all going to go through process. It's got to come through here. It's got to go through FinCom. So all of the issues that we're mm -hmm. just talking about will be right. But you I know, mean, just better. That, that's the. Then. But you know, I, I I don't. I feel that we and me personally tend to jump ahead and, and get over involved in things and you know how far outside of the domain of what committees you're on. The question, for example, is that where is it? This is significant fiscal impact to the town across the board. It isn't. You know, if you sum up what they have recommended over a period of ten. Years, it's a major capital request, and and and, and it's significant. Right. And uh, I think that you know, to and I agree with, with the committee's comment that you take it verbatim, but you have it on the table and you have to respond to it. And if you're going to respond to it, as you said, you better be very solid in, in, in your in your conclusion. Mm -hmm. I can't. I don't want to wait till next fall when we get oh we got two fire trucks on the table. That's a million two, and we got to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the that's the position mm -hmm. I don't like that's to get. We, 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 we have five. a million five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have no shortage of boogeymen around the corner, basically. Oh, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. to, to the capital, to the, to the uh, assessment of the round school, you yeah. realize that we're sorting out the round school, but yep. that roof is yep. there. looming. Yep. It's there. It's coming. Yep. Yep. It's a million plus. But so it's a million plus for sure. So we've got, we've got a bunch of seven figure. Uh, you know, vultures uh, mm -hmm. sitting on the post. We do, you know, for sure. Right but the, the great thing is 
we're sitting here now talking about something that's going to be happening in the future. We've not been able to do that before. Yeah, it's I, a break I, I, yeah, from no, a long time. It, we're it, planning. It's, it's the feeling that, you know, we have defined responsibilities, you know, and, there are, and we don't want to be stepping on the toes of the sportsmen, the fire department, you know, you know uh, the FinCon, whatever. But you get a sense of, you know, you like to get the doc. And if you have a, my question, I want to question the conclusions and not assume the conclusions of the conclusions of the report are de facto the only option. Sure. And if it calls for them to come back in, because I, I, I did research and I found out there's an organization called There is a Fire Department, which is our Quincy, Massachusetts, where all this comes from, all these sure. 100, 300 regulations on, on amendments. It's pervasive. The NFPA, right? Yes, yeah. National Fire Department. But then again, you go to there's a voluntary fire department association mm -hmm. that no one looks at. Which, and the question they did something is, what are we permanent or voluntary? And it's a formula to calculate based upon the men and so on. There's something about it, and they maintain in their in their in their opening document that the recommendations of the National Fire Department Association cannot and should not apply to voluntary associations because they're not appropriate. In other words, we're not a town. We're not Boston. And we don't have to deal with fire trucks in the same way a Boston fire truck with the number of runs they have, right. you know, things yeah. of that nature. Yet there is no distinction in the regulations when it says Newbury and Boston should be between the city and the town. And mm. You know, they say large, small fire trucks tires must be replaced every seven years. It applies to both of them. Mm. Now the reality is, and I was somewhat taken aback by it. There is a formula to say how volunteer are you. And what's interesting, I don't know what, where we sit in the queue relative there too. And maybe to your point, justification, we're not we're not violating the standards, we're adapting the standards to our business acumen. And one of the other things is is that while there are these standards, again, you went and saw that there's no scientific basis, and I went in and, and also did some sleuthing around for the only scientific paper written on this. There is one done some 10 or 15 years ago. Unfortunately, it cost 45 bucks to get it. It's part of the Journal of the American Chemical Society. They have a polymer division. And, um, and they would take my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, we might as well get it in advance because we're going to need to know this. So I'll, I'll see if I can get it through. Yeah, so, but, but what was the... Uh, what was it, the was the oxidation, it was the oxidation of tires. Oh, okay. Sure. And yeah. it was, it, was uh, it actually was a review article of all of the work that we would have been done, which would have been something, put it in the library for us and say, okay, now we have it. Yeah. Yeah, we, I, I subscribe to the National Fire Protective Association website. Now, now I've got my password and I can win with it all the right. <laughs> and but they, you, but they, what they tell you, you cannot, you cannot download them. You cannot uh, yeah. PDF them or anything else. That you can't take them up, but you can read them on. on you know, and it, it's interesting to read because you know they made some changes years ago that there's no way you can have external people on fire truck. You can't sit on the, on the back end anymore, which is what I used to do when I first came to town. We would be on the back end of the trucks and we would go to the fires holding on to the hose in the back of the truck. That's no longer allowed. That's the cab phenomenon. Just yeah, places right. you know how to put them in. Now you have to have seat belts for everybody. You know, I mean, there is regulations that, you know, that they have put in, and this all occurred in the early 90s, I believe, when the regulations changed, and they update them so, every so often. And it's, you know, it, it's good for, for, the, for the major <coughs> business towns that, that have make a number of runs and so on and so forth. And, you know, and I was struck by the fact is where do we fit in the queue? That's all. I, mean, I, I don't think that, and take you think about it, we're going to have to replace all our equipment sooner or later. We don't. Yeah. And the other thing was is that at FinCom, we're, just, we're asking how viable protection by a company number one is fiscally over time. So whether or not we're faced to buying those equipment, because I don't know how long they're going to be able to survive. We lease those trucks, mm -hmm. which is a whole different business decision. Now, if I'm leasing a vehicle, you're more in the business. I'm responsible for maintenance, but the vehicle must meet some preliminary standards in order to be leasable. Yeah. You can't lease a can't lease a dog to me and ask me to maintain it. You know who's responsible for if it needs to be replaced? And one of the, some of the trucks that they have put on the list is the Byfield trucks. Is it our responsibility to replace? It? I don't know. I would say probably because we're the one using it. But then again. 
you know, if it's they're the ones leasing it to us in the form that we have, it may be their responsibility. Now, if that's the case, there's a couple things that come into play. They can buy a fire truck at much lower cost than we can because we need to buy by state standards. They don't. I remember Michael Garris mentioning how we could buy an ambulance at thirty thousand, that was sixty thousand on the list price because he can go and negotiate because they're not a state entity. And he bought; they would buy used equipment and things of that nature. Maybe that's the way to go. And let them buy it at you know fifty cents on the dollar. They said cost. And, oh, and yeah, exactly. And then provide it to Newbury as the lease vehicle, and we maintain it, but we don't have to. Well, I think we're going to have a lot of discussion on this over coming years, but I think we've done enough for this morning. So, I agree. Okay. Any other concerns? Next week. Mm -hmm. would be toward the end of March. 23rd would be Thursday, yeah, Thursday morning. Um, yeah, I won't be here, but um, so if we can muster a quorum, we can set yeah. it. Should we do a contingent vote we have in preference? Let's set it, preference? let's set it now. We yeah. can always cancel it. So and if we cancel it, I'll get get the two years as early okay. as possible.